Hey everybody, Rob Greenfield here, and today I'm gonna to share with you some of the most easy and abundant foods to grow for those of you that are in a colder climate. So this applies to people across much of the Northern United States, Northern Europe, and around many climates around the world. So if that fits you and you wanna grow a lot of food in your garden and have a lot of food on your table, then this is definitely the video for you. A lot of you know me for my year of growing and foraging 100% of my food, where literally everything that I ate for a year was either from my garden or foraged. But I did that in Florida, in a very hot climate where I could grow food year around. A lot of people saw what I did and they thought, oh, you can only do this because you're in a warm climate. But the truth is, warm climate, cold climate, as long as you work within your region, you can grow an incredible amount of food. And a lot of the most self-sufficient people that I've ever met live in cold climate places like Wisconsin or Ohio or New York. So there's so many foods that you can grow. It's just about growing what grows well and abundantly in your area. So when I'm talking about easiest and most abundant, easiest means they grow really well. It's hard to kill them. Even if you have what you consider a black thumb, there's a good chance you'll be able to grow these and walk away feeling like you have a green thumb. And then abundant means that they produce a lot of food. But there's a second part to that, and that is that they produce a substantial amount of food on your plate and that they'll actually be able to fill yourself up and fill your pantry up to get through the winter. Because that's the key in the colder climates. If you want to grow a large portion of your food, it's that you produce as much as you can during those growing months, during the growing season, and then you store it in jars, in freezers, dehydrating it and such, in order to be able to make it through the winter with the food from your garden. So these foods are gonna help you drastically reduce the number of times that you need to go to the grocery store and drastically increase the nutrition and the abundance that you're getting straight at home or on your farm right where you are. I have to start with the potato. One thing that uh, a lot of people have the hardest time with is calories. Now, I wanted to show you this potato in particular. It might look crazy to a lot of you, but this is a potato that has been stored in the pantry for about six or seven months now. I'm in southern France and it's mid-May, and this was put into the pantry in around October or November. So these store for a very long time. So as far as your calories go, potatoes are gonna be one of the most calorie dense, producing a large bulk of your food, and they store really well. So this knocks out two really important things. And the potatoes that are left over that you don't eat, this one right here could be planted to produce more. So that is the wonderful potato. The second one I want to share with you is pumpkins, and I am in love with pumpkins. Not just the ones you see that you make jack-o'-lanterns out of. There's many different shapes, colors, and sizes of pumpkins. This is just a beautiful one at the farm that I'm staying at. Pumpkins are amazing because they store a really long time. Again, it's May, and this is from the last season, and it's just as good as can be. And you can also eat the seeds. You can eat the skin, and as a matter of fact, I will take the entire thing except the stem and blend it up into a soup. So pumpkin and different winter squashes, they provide a lot of sustenance, nutrients, and a lot of them are very easy to grow. Grow the ones that are adapted to your climate. Now, next I want to share summer squashes. So zucchini, this actually, is more of a winter squash, but it looks kind of like a summer squash, so I'm using it. Now, zucchinis are truly amazing. I've traveled through Washington, through Wisconsin, through New York, all across the northern United States, and people tell me that they have so many zucchinis that they have to try to give them away, but they can't, because everybody has so many of them. They get huge, you can eat them when they're giant, or you can eat them when they're small if you want them to be more tender. So zucchinis are a, a must for a huge amount of sustenance and being extremely easy to grow. The next one I wanna talk about is 
beans. And beans are truly incredible. You can either eat them fresh right off of the vine or the bush. There's, there's pole beans and there's bush beans. You can eat them fresh. You can wait for them to dry on the vine to have dried beans like you would buy at the store, like your pinto beans or your black beans or your lentils. Or you can can them. These are uh, canned ones, for example. And another way to store them is freezing them. So the freezer is a really great way to store food. It generally costs only a few dollars a month to run a deep chest freezer and you can store a few hundred pounds of food. So again, one of the most important things in the colder climates is storing the abundance. Canning is one way to do that. Freezing is another. And then there's also drying as well. And then jams, I'll show those as well. There's also the pantry for things like potatoes and carrots that can store in the pantry. So there's a lot of different ways to store your food and that's the key. Beans are very easy, very abundant. And I also wanna mention peas, which are kind of my runner up to beans, but very easy to grow for a lot of people. Some people have problems with them um, and they're not nearly as filling as beans, but peas are another really great crop as well. All right, the next one is carrots. This is definitely a favorite for me, although to be honest, I just love all foods that grow really abundantly and easily. I mean, so this is a great video for me to be filming because this is my passion. But carrots, now these carrots have been stored in boxes of sand in a cold pantry. Again, these have been stored for about six months. So they're not your fresh, super crisp ones, but let me give this a bite. That's still pretty crunchy and these are about six months stored. Wow. It's actually, uh, wow, they're even sweet still. Nice. Not as flavorful as some carrots that I've had, but sweet. So these can be stored. They can be canned as well. I love to make carrot juice. I mean, that's one of my favorite things. So carrots, that's an important one. And I wanna mention with carrots, beets. Now, for a lot of people, beets are super easy. Some people, beets have been a challenge. So I don't necessarily consider them the most easy, but I have to mention them because they can be very abundant. For some people, they're very easy. But if you grow beets, you have to eat the greens. If you're wasting the greens, you're wasting some of the best nutrients and taste. They're one of the inc most incredible greens, if you ask me. They're, they're absolutely my favorite or one of my top favorite greens. So carrots and beets. To continue on, I wanna mention a few more root vegetables, and that would be radishes and turnips. So radishes are one of the easiest foods to grow, and you can actually harvest radishes in about 30 days, the small radishes. They're one of the fastest growing crops that there are. And you can grow daikon radishes, which, which get really huge. And I grew a lot of daikon radish in Florida. And then turnips, turnips can be pretty easy to grow as well. They are a nice root. They go really well with uh, potatoes and beets and carrots baked together. I love baked turnip. Living off of your garden doesn't mean living without flavor. In fact, it can mean a really delicious garden full of flavor. This food can be grown right here and you can harvest it within moments before you're putting it on your plate. So you can get some of the most delicious foods that you'll ever eat. But I really like, to, in order to have that, for me, there's some key ingredients. Onions are one of them, herbs are as well, which I'll get into pretty soon. Now, onions can be extremely easy. I wanna say that you might have a hard time getting those big, giant onions that you would get at the store. That's not something that every gardener or beginner gardener will be able to get. It's more likely that you'll be able to be successful with small bulbs. And the other thing that's really one of the easiest is bunching onions and you can eat the greens. Now you can eat the greens of all onions as well. And actually if you eat just the right amount, you get a crop of green onions and then a crop of the bulbs as well. So the smaller ones are generally easier for beginner gardeners. Another one that I wanna mention is garlic. Now, garlic is super important to me. It's a wonderful medicine. It adds an incredible amount of flavor. 
For some people, they found garlic to be super easy. It's a little bit more of a challenging one because you plant it in the fall and then harvest it in the late spring. It sits under the snow for the winter. So that makes it not quite the easiest. It's a little more challenging, especially for beginners, but it can be pretty easy. With garlic, this is a clove. Pop that in the ground, starts to sprout, and then you've got garlic. Now, if you're not successful with the bulbs, you can grow it just for its greens and you can get really, really productive, abundant greens out of garlic and they're very strong. That was quite strong, just like garlic. So onions and garlic, those are also extremely important for preserving food when you're canning um, and adding to soups. Those really fill out the meal and add a whole lot of flavor. I wanna to talk to you about greens now, and greens are where you get a lot of your nutrients. They're one of the things that makes the most sense to grow locally, rather than having them be shipped. They take up a huge amount of space, and they really are just one thing that does not make sense to be shipping long distance. So this is kale right here, and some of the beginner greens that are really easy would include kale, arugula, lettuce, mustard greens, Swiss chard, spinach, and amaranth. Those are seven of the easier ones to grow. Amaranth, what's really special about that is it's often self-seeding, and once you get it going, you'll have amaranth coming back time and time again. So greens are one of the most nutrient-dense foods out there, and if you can eat greens at every meal, you, uh, you have the ability to change your life if you're not eating healthy and they make a huge difference. Now, greens are generally what you're gonna be eating during the, the months, during the, the growing season. A lot of people don't preserve their greens so much. You can, and one of the greens that's easiest to preserve is sauerkraut. So this here isn't exactly sauerkraut. Um, this is more like preserved cabbage. Sauerkraut though comes from cabbage and you can store away jars and jars and jars of sauerkraut. It's just salt, cabbage, and not even water. And then you can add in other things if you want like herbs, but literally just salt and cabbage stores easily for through the winter and it's delicious, adds so much value to your meal the fermentation of it through wild fermentation actually increases the nutrient value of it. So cabbage is one that grows pretty well, stores and makes a really value added food to add to each of your meals. Can't say enough about sauerkraut. And if you're interested in wild fermentation, check out Sandor Katz's book called Wild Fermentation. It is an, a must read if you're gonna get into the storing and fermenting of foods. All right, next I wanna to talk to you about herbs. These add incredible amount of flavor to your meals. You can make teas with them, and they are often one of the absolute easiest things to grow. So some of the herbs that I'm gonna mention are basil, dill, cilantro, oregano, rosemary, thyme, and mint. Here is basil. This is being grown in a greenhouse to get it started. I wanna mention one thing about basil, and that's that it likes heat. So this is more of the peak of the summer. If you try to grow this while it's cold, in the beginning of the year, you're gonna have a really hard time. And that's an important thing, growing the right things at the right time of the year. Now, another herb that I wanna mention, this one is just, I mean, for a lot of people, it's a problem because it's so successful and it reproduces so well that it takes over a garden. So when I'm talking about easy and abundant, Mint is the picture plant for that. It reproduces through these roots and they just spread through the soil. So all you have to do is take some roots from a friend's garden, put those down, and those will produce mint. So mint is, is definitely one of my top recommendations and it can end up being a problem. So if you do plant it, I mean, for me, when I was a beginner gardener, I said, any plant that becomes a problem is a friend of mine. And I still generally feel that way. One thing I wanna mention about herbs, and that is some herbs grow really well from seed, like, for example, coriander, cilantro. These are really great to plant from seed. 
Now, on the other hand, mint is a difficult one to start from seed. So for the ones that are difficult to start from seed, I would recommend buying those as already started plants from your local nursery or another gardener or um, a plant sale or something of that sort. So herbs galore. There are so many. I just named seven, but there are a lot of other easy herbs to grow as well. Now I want to talk to you about fruit trees, which are totally different from a lot of these crops. Most of these are annual crops that you have to plant again and again each year. If you can invest in fruit trees, you're investing in your future. You can plant fruit trees. And now the thing is, you are investing in the future. To start getting a lot of apples might take a few years before you get your first apples and five years before you start to get a lot, but you'll have apples for decades to come. So fruit trees that I recommend, apples, pears, plums, mulberries, and cherries. Those are some of the easiest ones to grow in those more northern climates. Apples can store just like this through the winter. You can uh, freeze them. You can make jams. Um, there's so much that you can do with your fresh fruits and you can also just enjoy incredible amounts of them during the season. So fruit trees are definitely a must. You can plant those around the edges of the property um, and make use of that vertical space with fruit trees. It's starting to rain here in the garden so I gotta cruise through these but we're getting towards the end. Keeping along the lines with fruits, I wanna mention some berries. Raspberries and blackberries generally are the easiest and those can go crazy and become a problem for a lot of people. Blueberries, on the other hand, need acidic soil. So for a lot of people, they are not a beginner. Strawberries also can be pretty easy. However, generally, raspberries and blackberries are more abundant than strawberries. So raspberries and blackberries are my two biggest recommendations for berries. But I just wanna say there's a lot of other ones out there. Gotta mention June berries, also called Saskatoon or service berries are a really great one as well. Right here I am holding blackberry chutney and jams are an incredible thing to make out of your raspberries and your blackberries. You can store lots and lots of jam. So that is a really, really great thing about those berries. Okay, next thing I wanna mention is tomatoes. Tomatoes grow super abundantly for so many people. And with tomatoes you can make huge amounts of sauce. I've just realized how many times I've said huge and abundance over the last 20 minutes or so, but that's what we're talking about. Plants that produce a huge amount. I just said it again. So tomatoes, one that I absolutely recommend in abundance. At my friend's house this weekend, we just planted over a hundred tomato plants for a family of four. It's a lot of tomatoes, but tomatoes are I mean, most people love them. Hot pepper is another one. This is something that can often grow in, in huge abundance and be very easy. I took one seed from my friend's Serrano pepper plant and that produced over a thousand Serrano peppers just from that one seed. Another thing that I wanna mention, sometimes this is a little bit harder, but cucumbers for making pickles. All right, I've got two last ones for you and these are perennials. And with that, I wanna mention that I really recommend perennials. These are plants that grow for year, year after year after year, rather than things that you have to plant each year like carrots. So rhubarb is one of the most incredible perennials. You plant rhubarb and, about, and it'll produce for about 25 years. Really recommend rhubarb. And then lastly, we're gonna finish it off with Jerusalem artichoke, also called sunchokes. And these are another one where if you don't contain them, they can spread through your garden and they can become wild as well. They produce a huge amount. I just said huge again. <laughs> they produce an incredible amount of food and they're very tasty. And I cook them basically like a potato. So there you have it. That is about 40 of my top recommendation for the easiest and most abundant foods to grow in your garden. I just want to say there's a lot more out there. I picked a lot of the common foods that people have a lot of experience with and, and, and recognize because it's easier to get started with that rather than plants that you might never heard of like gooseberries, which grow well in northern climates or like moringa kale and uh, moringa katuk and chaya, which are more southern climate. 
So I just want to say that I did kind of pick things that are more known, but there's a lot of unknown foods that grow extremely well. I want to say try your best to get your seeds locally. Locally adapted seeds will grow much better in your area because they are adapted to that area. And then buying your plants from local nurseries that are using varieties that have been grown in the area for decades helps a lot. Also for support, join a community garden. If you, you know, feel like you have a black thumb, it would be incredibly helpful to be around other people. And then also volunteer at farms and gardens. That way you can be learning and you can be helping at the same time. And the amount of knowledge that you gain by volunteering at gardens and farms is pretty priceless. I hope that this video has really inspired you to grow a lot of food this year and the years to come. Start small. Don't feel like you have to grow all 40 of these crops this year and add on each year as you start to get better and better. I'm excited for you to get out there and start growing some of your own food. If you enjoyed this, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Lots more to come. Comment below and uh, also like this to help this get out into the YouTube world and inspire more people to start growing their own food. I love you all very much and see you again soon.